So um, the question I got was, uh, if I do you think teachers need better feedback? I really liked how it was worded because, um, you know, you talk about feedback, but you never talk about the quality of feedback you get. Um, so to start off, I thought we could think about it for a little bit. Is you know, there's a saying that goes that half a loaf of bread is better than none. And I wonder uh, if we're talking about feedback, is half a loaf better than none? I, I'm not sure it is. Bad feedback, poor feedback, can be very detrim det detrimental, uh, and it can actually work against good teaching and against the teacher. So uh, I thought that instead of saying the, the answer to the teachers needing feedback, I suppose is yes. Um, of course, you have great feedback in, in many places. So instead of just saying yes, and because that would take about five seconds and I have 10 minutes, I thought we could discuss what makes or what I believe makes good feedback um, or better, right? So uh, feedback, I really like this. Uh, I really like this definition for feedback. And I especially like the part where it says that it's used as a basis for improvement. So if uh, feedback is supposed to be used as a basis for improvement, we have to guide it, we have to shape it in a way that it actually enables improvement and it's not just plain feedback, right? So I like to think of feedback in terms of, uh, these, are, these are, are adjectives that are usually used with uh, assessment, but I also like to, I mean, not just me, but uh, I like to use it when I talk about feedback. Um, you know, you have formative feedback and you have summative feedback. Summative is more like evaluation of, uh, if we're talking about teaching, summative feedback would be how your teaching is. Uh, it doesn't give you anything to to build on. It doesn't give you anything to improve on, or not anything specific, not anything objective, right? Uh, so think about formative feedback because that's the one that actually gives you this room for improvement that can be used for improvement and for uh, empowering the teacher and making teaching practice better every time. Um, Okay, so what makes good feedback? The first thing I think that we have to address is that you need to work on a teacher's self-confidence. A teacher has to be confident enough in its own, uh, in his or her own uh, ability and um, teaching uh, skills uh, in order to be able to actually process the feedback and use it for improvement. Because if a teacher only uh, gets the feedback but doesn't feel confident enough about him or herself, uh, he'll take it personally, he'll take it as criticism. And feedback cannot be taken as criticism, right? So empower the teacher first. Work with uh, self-confidence building activities and, and practices in your school. Uh, in order to make feedback actually effective. Uh, the second thing you have to work on, and I think that is a basis for effective feedback and better feedback in that sense, is uh, focus. Many, many times uh, feedback is given, I mean, I think I'm considering mostly uh, observation feedback um, here or else. Um, many times I've seen feedback being given and people point out everything that went wrong or everything that could be done differently in a class. Um, and I think that is not, that's, that's not positive, that's not constructive, because nobody can improve 10 different things at the same time. You have to focus on one or two aspects of the teaching. 
uh, because then you can be, you know, focus at one or two aspects at a time. Uh, pay attention to those two or one or two aspects during the observation because then it's going to be easier and every time you can focus on a different aspect. If the person, um, if the teacher builds on that, if the teacher works on that and improves on that, the next year or next term or something, you can focus on a different aspect. And uh, that aspect that people, that you focus on during observation and then during feedback, uh, I think it should be agreed on before the observation, before everything. Um, I especially like when the teacher that's going to be observed uh, says what aspect I, I want you to look into and because I, need, I think I can improve on that and uh, can you help me improve on that? Can you look how it's been handled in classmate? It can be board work or use of L1 in the classroom or classroom management, anything. Um, presentation skills, but focus on one of them. Um, one or two. I, I, from what I've, all the research I've been doing and the work I've been doing with teachers at my school, uh, that usually has a lot more uh, positive results than, than just not doing it. Um, yeah, Francesco, it, it helps too. Uh, something else, so, so far we have better feedback is made of uh, confident teachers who don't take it personally, focusing on one or two aspects instead of everything. And uh, I think then you, we should go into how the observation form is done. I think that it, it's not fair, and it, it doesn't really work if you have box ticking observation forms, uh, because teaching is not box ticking. It's not that simple. Um, so no box ticking, I think we should write it down, we should word it out, uh, and feedback consequently cannot be just a bunch of things, you did this, you didn't do that, there was this in the class or in the lesson or not, um, should be done, spelled it out that. Uh, how am I doing for time? Okay. Uh, next, and for again, it just seems like everything is, is essential, but this is possibly one of the most important things uh, for better feedback is allow for reflection. Um, effective feedback only works, feedback only works if there is reflection. Reflection by the person observing and reflection, especially by the person being observed and receiving the feedback. Um, reflection, we, we've spoken about uh, reflective teaching and reflection today already, and I think it's such an important part of teaching because um, you have to, the, the observed, the observee, the, the teacher thing has to reflect after the class, looking at the notes and, and trying to, to think back on, on why the teacher may have done something that you didn't understand or you would have done differently. And, um, and the teacher being observed, reflecting on, on the points that the, the, the person giving feedback is, is bringing up. Um, and, you know, not necessarily you have to agree with it. Um, you, you may disagree, and then I think it's very empowering if you get feedback and you don't necessarily agree with it, if you can come, if you can argument and you can give your reason for doing a certain thing, right? Reflection always helps. Um, okay, and it's, it, feedback, if, if you do the reflection afterwards, then it's, it's where the feedback becomes improvement and a path to, to improvement. Um, okay. And last but not least, um, feedback comes in many shapes and forms. And it's up to the people giving and, uh, and receiving the feedback to find the way that works better for them. Uh, maybe you have something written down. Maybe it's just going to be uh, a chat, an informal chat. 
maybe you're gonna get it recorded and then evaluate together, you know, look at it together. Uh, there is no formula, there is no perfect formula. You have to find um, your way. Um, last but not least, there's a video I like to use when I talk about feedback to, to teachers. Uh, it's a story about, uh, it's called Austin's Butterfly, the address is there. But basically it's a, it's a, a kindergarten teacher, He's it, he's, he shows children how feedback is important into and how it changes the result of some work, um, of a student's work. And it's beautiful and I think it becomes very, uh, it becomes much more tangible when, when you see it. So um, I think that's it. Uh, let's go out and give better feedback to our peers and, um, and everybody else.